And welcome everyone to our news conference with the Lewis University men's volleyball team as they are preparing to play McKendry in the Molten Off the Block National Match of the Week. And we're joined first by Coach Dan Friend. And Coach, just give you an opportunity for an opening statement. What's your thoughts about playing the Bearcats? Well, first off, uh, Vinny, thanks for having us. Uh, always a privilege uh, to with uh, the news media with you guys. And so, um, yeah, I mean, McKendry's playing really good volleyball. They got a, a core veteran group back and Nikki does a great job and has been doing a great job with that program uh, ever since she started it. And so I have a lot of respect for them and her and everything that they do. And so, uh, but yeah, they've started off the year great. have a lot of really good pieces or, you know, controlling the flow really well on their side of the net, as well as imposing some pressure on the other side. And so uh, we're certainly going to have to be at the top of our game to, to even be where we want to be with them, so. And we'll open it up now the questions for, for the media. Um, I'll, I'll kind of start it off. And first question for um, Kevin. Kevin, you, you guys have had an opportunity to scout McKendry. Just want to get your perspective from a setter. What are some things that you've noticed that McKendry does really well on the offensive side? Um, they're just really efficient. They're pretty good when getting the opportunities to execute on perfect pass situations and um, defensively I think they do a really good job of just keeping the ball alive and that's when they get the opportunities to get some out of system swings and so I think that's one of their best pieces is they just keep the ball alive and um, they play defense around that so I think that's their core element. All right we'll now go to Jonathan Bates of Off the Block who has a question for um, Ryan Cohen. Uh, Ryan, um, you guys were on pause um, a few weeks ago. What did you guys learn from that experience? Sorry, just to confirm, you said, what did we learn from the experience? So we had a, after we kind of, the news was broke to us, we had a conversation in the locker room and um, it was it was kind of a uniform statement across the team from the coaching staff and the players that um, even though we're shut down, we need to realize that uh, we're looking at the next weekend, whatever games kind of move around and whoever our next opponent is, we started prepping for that uh, the next day and whether that's the film and we're a little bit locked down. So we, we try to do as much as we can without touching a volleyball. So how can we prep for that next game um, and be in the best position possible for when we were active again and when we could get back on the court, so. And to follow up on that, I'll ask the uh, two middles as we're joined by TJ Murray and uh, Tyler Mitchum. When you guys have a little bit of off time, how difficult is it for you to kind of get that connection back with, with your setters and get the offense flowing, especially running the middles? Um, it's, I mean, uh, coming back right off of being quarantined, I mean, it's just about getting back into it. And I think me and Kevin have, and TJ, we all developed a pretty good uh, connection. It just takes a couple reps, I feel like, and just getting back and getting your body familiar with the impact kind of thing. Uh, and I will say Kevin makes it easy, you know, because having a setter that's, you know, six, eight, you know, you just have to get up, get good timing and he'll find you. So it's been kind of a luxury. And I'll ask this to, to all the players, you look at the Miva season so far as it's been playing out. You know, a lot of the fans, everyone were saying that, you know, you guys are the clear preseason favorites to win. I know you guys have the mentality that, uh, you know, meet me the title expectations. But have you guys all been surprised at the high level of play that you've seen in the conference so far this season? And well, that will be for any of the players who wants to take it. <laughs> I was going to say uh, it's, it's not too surprising, I think. Um, it's, it's been a chaotic year, but I think, I mean, us versus McKendry, the match of the week, you have that team that's returning all of their guys. So obviously they're gelled well and they're ready to play. They have that chemistry piece. So we knew they were going to be good. Um, and Ohio state's got some new pieces. You look all around the conference and you just have some returning guys and they've been playing together for a few years now. Loyola has got Zold back and there's just some moving pieces that last year was, was hectic as well. And now these teams can finally start to play and get in a little bit of a groove. So I think it's great to see the Miva have a little bit more competition from top to bottom. And uh, guys are taking sets off each other, and it's a little bit of a battle out there right now. So it's going to be more fun even come, come Miva tournament once we get a little bit to the playoffs. So I think we're all excited. 
We'll now jump back to Jonathan, who has a um, question for um, Kevin. So you guys uh, lost a match at Ohio State. You went to five at, um, at a match in uh, Loretto. Um, and then, of course, um, Loyola um, lost uh, a couple times at Ohio State. Even without fans, do you think that uh, there is some home court advantage uh, uh, at play in men's volleyball this year? Of course. I mean, there's always home court advantage. Guys been practicing on the same court every day, and um, that's always gonna that's always gonna be there. And to say Ohio State, um, of course, like some guy, some some teams that didn't have the opportunity to play there, or other guy, other teams didn't have the opportunity to play at visiting away places there's, like last year because 2020 it uh, ended short. Um, of course, there's going to be a little bit of home court advantage because it's been a year or so off and other guys haven't even had the opportunity to play there. So to say fans are not, um, I think there's always going to be somewhat of a little bit of home court advantage. So I know um, Jonathan and I both have questions for Coach Friends. So Jonathan, if you don't mind, uh, I'll, I'll go first here. So oh, Dan, talking to Nikki Salem in the past, she has really, you know, admired your program has talked about how much your program's kind of the example of what a D2 program can become. And, you know, also just some of the advice you've given her, you know, what does that mean for you as, as a coach, you know, when you hear someone have such high praises for, for you? Uh, and like I said, I have a lot of respect for Nikki, not only how she coaches, but how she manages her life and two programs and everything else. And so certainly a lot of mutual respects in, in terms of, uh, her career and how she handles her her, her life uh, and everything that goes with that. But anything you get a compliment like that, it's great. I mean, I came into league and in Pete and Arnie and those guys were the old veterans and uh, those guys did that for me. I asked lots of questions and we were trying to model a program off Ohio State and uh, and so I had a lot of respect and I have a lot of respect for both those guys that were pioneers in our program, were pioneers in our sport and so. I think it's kind of your job. You know what I mean? It's like anybody that's coming in and you can help them out and kind of foster the environment. We're always trying to make men's volleyball better. And, uh, and that's what we want to do. Uh, Jonathan, I know you had a question for Coach Friends as well. You took my question, but I have another question. Uh, some a similarity that both uh, programs have this year, especially, is uh, strong blocking. Uh, McKendry has uh, the top blocker in the country with uh, Lucas Galifos. Uh, can you uh, comment on um, how you're playing to neutralize their uh, blocking attack? I don't know about neutralize, but uh, I certainly try to uh, get our offensive flow, and that's relying on the guys that are on the screen right here and a few other guys. I think, you know, ultimately uh, look in the past and put our offense in a good system and uh, be able to challenge them uh, at a high point with our, our attackers will be pretty important. But they're certainly going to dig some balls and they're certainly going to block some balls. I just think it's uh, uh, can we be clean when we need to be to, to really challenge that and put some strain on that system. And uh, they do a nice job with uh, those middles and their pins set up well. And uh, the liberos and defense does a nice job. And so uh, we're going to be on point for sure. All right. And I think we have time for one or two more questions. We'll go on, on a little bit of a lighter note here back to the middles with uh, TJ and Tyler. So we, we see in your background of your Zoom, you got the Loyal or the Lewis, excuse me, flag flying. Uh, that, that seems like it's a custom buy. You know, can you give us a little story on how you guys got that? Do you bring that around campus? Do you what, give us a, a little details on it? Yeah, I should bring it around campus. Actually, um, our former libero, Michael Simmons, he would make uh, custom flags. And so he ended up making this one. And uh, he cut me a good deal on it, so I had to I had to get it. But very well, and I it, you can definitely tell it's a college setup with, with that hanging right there. So. Yeah, perfect. That's what I'm going for. <laughs> uh, we'll have uh, one final question to close it out, uh, Jonathan. I know you have a question for Kevin. Uh, you, you guys were without the services of Kyle Bouget for the first few matches of the season. What has he meant to the uh, team coming back and uh, the last four matches that he's played? He's been everything. Um, I mean, I can say for some of the three other guys in the room, um, they've been playing with him for three plus years. And so having him back just brings so much chemistry. And to them, it probably brings back memories as well. So, um, I mean, he's, he's, he brings a lot 
And so I think that's just an understatement at times because um, he brings service pressure. He brings good, good receiving, good attacking. I just, he's a great overall, overall round player. So, um, and great dude off the court. So it's just exciting and fun to have him back.